Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 8 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'll be covering mid lane Annie, the Dark Child. You wanna play too? It'll be fun. So, let's hop right into this guide by first looking at Annie's pros. Now, Annie is a champion with some very high burst damage that can easily delete squishies in the mid and late game. As soon as she starts getting her items and has her ultimate available, she will be able to flash on top of those squishies and pretty much one-shot them. She has some pretty low cooldowns which are great at farming and she is pretty easy to last hit on. You will be able to spam your Q ability over and over again throughout the lane phase on minions to easily last hit them. Finally, because of how easy it is to farm on her and her rather easy combo, she's also a pretty easy champion to learn. You definitely will not have to be a high tier player in order to play Annie effectively and carry games. Annie, however, like every other champion in League, does have her fair share of cons as well. She is a very immobile mid laner that has no built-in escape ability, so positioning properly is extremely important. If you get caught in a bad position, if you don't have your stun available, you will die insanely quickly. Now, because of how your stun works with those passive stacks, it is fairly predictable when Annie is going to go in for all ins as well. You can, of course, save your E ability as the last easy way to get this stun available, but you are still pretty predictable. She's also got some pretty low spell ranges as well, which is part of the reason she is so reliant on Flash in order to engage into the enemy team with her Tibbers. For your runes, you have a couple different options, but my favorite is going for Domination and Sorcery, grabbing Predator as your keystone. This will grant you a large boost of movement speed on activation, which is insanely strong on mid lane Annie for any roams you do try to do. It will get you to those lanes really, really quickly, and if you do have Tibbers available, you will have some devastating roams. Since Annie is a champion with a lot of stuns, I like to go for cheap shots so you do bonus true damage to enemies that are stunned, and then eyeball collection for bonus ability power on your takedowns. Then to make your roams even better, I like to go for Relentless Hunter so my unique takedowns grant permanent out of combat movement speed. In the sorcery side, I continue this by getting celerity so I get 3% extra movement speed and some extra ability power based on my movement speed, and then I go for Gathering Storm. This is great on Annie because it is scaling ability power as the game progresses, so it's going to be very, very strong in the late game and give Annie a big chunk of ability power. If you're not somebody that likes to take Predator, you could of course go for Arcane Comet. It's really, really strong on Annie as well because it will increase your harassment and make you just a little bit burstier. For your first summoner spell, I'd recommend taking Flash. Annie is a very immobile champion and you can use this defensively throughout the game to save yourself over and over again. Now on a champion like Annie, since you do have some very low ranges and you do need to engage onto the enemy team, it's even stronger as an engage. Use this to jump onto the enemy champion with a stun available and delete them with the rest of your abilities. Now for that second summoner spell, I'd pretty much always recommend taking Ignite. It was recently buffed so it does do a lot of damage and it will increase your kill threshold and of course is also really really strong against champions who do abuse healing like Swain or Soraka. You could also opt for something like Teleport instead, but generally I find Ignite a much better option. Annie's passive ability is Pyromania, which is a stacking ability that will allow you to stun on the 5th spell. You can use any of your spells to gain a stack of Pyromania, so a lot of people will sit on 3 stacks and then activate their E as a defensive and then go in with that stun available. When you are at 4 stacks though, the next one will stun your target for between 1.25 and 1.75 seconds and consume all of your Pyromania stacks. You'll generally want to stun with your ultimate as much as possible because it is your strong AoE ability, but if it is in cooldown, you could use your W, and finally, if your W was in cooldown or there was just a single target, then you would want to stun from a longer range with your Q. During the lane phase, you will want to try to trade with the enemy as much as you can when you do have your stun available because it's pretty much just free damage. After you get that damage off, try to disengage. Your Q ability is Disintegrate, which is a really nice single target damaging ability with a really low cooldown. If this ability does kill your target, it also refunds its mana cost and half of its cooldown is immediately refreshed, so if you do kill something, instead of the cooldown being 4 seconds, it will be 2 seconds. That makes this ability really, really strong to farm throughout the lane phase because it does do a pretty significant amount of damage and it's not really going to cost you too much mana while being able to be used every 2 seconds. This of course will also build up your passive stack, so when you do hit 4, you will want to use this on the enemy champion and go in for some free damage. This spell is also a point and click ability, it is not a skill shot, so it's also your most reliable damage. Annie's W ability is Incinerate, which is a short range AoE ability with a 50 degree angle. This ability releases a cone of fire in the target direction which deals magic damage to all enemies hit. If you do have your passive stun available, this will stun every single target that is hit by this ability. 
This ability does have an 85% AP ratio, which is even better than your Q ability. However, it does have an 8 second cooldown, so it is not as strong as your Q due to that. It is, however, great for stunning multiple enemies and, of course, clearing up those minion waves because you can easily hit all the minions with this ability. Annie's E ability is Molten Shield, which is a great defensive option that also goes on Tibbers and even does magic damage when hit. So, like I said, when you do activate this, this shield will go on both yourself and Tibbers and reduce the damage you take for 3 seconds, which scales from between 16 and 40%. Any enemies who basic attack Annie or Tibbers are also dealt magic damage during this time. The damage this ability deals is not that great, but the damage reduction is incredibly strong. Whenever you are going for trades or team fights, you will want to make sure you activate this shield because it will reduce a lot of damage. As I previously mentioned, you can always sit on three stun stacks as well and activate this ability to gain that fourth spell stack and then engage with the stun that you will be provided. And finally, we've got your ultimate, Summon Tibbers. When you activate this ability, you will summon Tibbers to the target location and deal a bunch of magic damage to those surrounding enemies. Tibbers will then remain as a controllable pet for 45 seconds. Of course, he will be auto-attacking as well, which will pump out even more damage. Tibbers then also has a flame aura as well, so he will deal magic damage to every enemy nearby him every second. If Annie ends up dying with Tibbers out, he will be enraged and get ghosted, 275% bonus attack speed, and 100% bonus movement speed. That means even if Annie ends up dying in a teamfight, she can still get some kills with Tibbers. You do always have the option of summoning him as well to take down towers or dragons as well because you will be able to tank them and put out a bunch of damage. For your skill order, you first want to put a point of course into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. You'll then want to focus on maxing your Q ability as quickly as possible because it is great at last hitting minions throughout the lane phase and it's really really strong at poking your enemy champion. You'll then want to focus on maxing your W ability second because it also does a pretty damn good source of damage and is great at clearing up minion waves in one fell swoop. And that of course means you want to save your E ability for last, but I really like taking a point in it early on at level 3 so I have that defensive shield and an easy way to generate a stack of my passive if I don't have any spells to cast on an enemy. During the lane phase, you'll of course first want to focus on farming as much as you can. You can of course use your Q ability to do this fairly easy on Annie, and you will also want to use that Q ability to poke your enemy champion as much as you can. When you do hit 4 stacks of your passive, you of course want to try to stun the enemy champion and go for some really free damage and disengage after your stun wears off. When enemies do go for trades on you or you do end up getting ganked, make sure you activate your E as a defensive because it will greatly reduce the damage. Finally, when you are level 6 and have your stun available, go for all-ins, especially if you have your flash to engage onto the enemy champion and quickly delete them. Of course, in this guide we are taking Predator, so you want to look for Rome's top and bot lane as much as you can as soon as you buy your boots. In teamfights, you'll first want to poke with your Q ability and auto attacks as much as you can before the fight actually starts to get the enemy champions low if you can. When you do see your opportunity and your team is ready for an engagement, make sure you engage with your flash and arc combo. You want to aim for those squishy targets on the backline if you can to easily delete them with Tibbers and the rest of your abilities. When you are in the middle of a team fight, make sure you start spamming your W and your Q ability for extra damage and when you do need a defensive, activate your E to reduce it as much as you can. Now let's look at some of your hard matchups and first up is Akali. Annie's a champion that can struggle against quick all-in champions and Akali is one of them. If you don't have your stun available and an Akali gets on top of you, you're pretty much just straight up screwed. Therefore, if you are playing against Nikali, you want to make sure you hold on to your stun as much as you can because she won't really engage into you when you have it available. Keep it available at all times. Another one of those all-in champions is Echo. He can do an absolute ton of bursts on Annie if she doesn't have her stun available, so therefore, just like against Akali, make sure you keep it available so he can't jump on top of you. He is a champion that's also relatively safe against your all-ins because unless you completely combo him out, he will be able to activate his ultimate after the stun ends and regain pretty much all of his health. Therefore, be very careful when trying to all-in Echo, focus on his other teammates. The other type of hard matchup for Annie is the longer range mages, and first up is Anivia. She has a longer range to Annie and is great against her, and of course if Annie does burst Anivia down, she of course has her egg form to come back to life. She is also a much better late game champion, so unless Annie can somehow take control of that lane, Anivia should outcarry the Annie. And for the last hard matchup here, I've got Vel'Koz. He's extremely hard for an Annie to deal with because he has really long ranges and can poke her over and over again throughout the lane phase. 
He's also going to be pretty hard to all in because he does have such a long range, but you will want to try to get on top of him whenever you can with a flash timbers combo because he is very squishy. Other than that though, you just want to focus on dodging his skill shots as much as you can throughout that lane phase. Alright, with all that covered, let's look at the item build which starts with a Doran's Ring, Health Potions, and a Warding Totem. You could always take something like a Dark Seal as well, but I feel like you get a lot more for the Doran's Ring on Annie, and I would prefer taking it. For your core build, you want to go for Ludens Echo, Rabadon's Death Cap, and of course Sork Shoes. This will give you a really high amount of ability power with some really nice added damage from the Ludens Echo proc, and of course you will have a bit of penetration as well from those Sork Shoes. You will do an absolute ton of damage with this core build and be able to delete squishy targets. For your item pool, you have a lot of great options, and first up would be the Zonias. This is a really solid item on Annie, and sometimes I even take it second before the Rabadon's Death Cap. It still increases your damage by a lot with all the ability power, but you really get a strong defensive as well with that stasis when you do activate it, which makes you untargetable. Now, if you're wishing to add a lot more damage as well, and also a bunch of magic penetration, you can always go for the Void Staff. This is an item I pretty much always grab on Annie as well. I usually save it till later on when I need that magic penetration, but it is a fantastic item. Now, Annie does always have the option of rushing a Rod of Ages as well. I don't take it too much myself, but it is a viable option if you want somewhat of a health pool as well. Now, although you already do get a bunch of movement speed from Predator, you could always go for Shirelius as well for that activated movement speed. It's usually not needed too much on Predator Annie, but it is still a viable item. Another pretty decent option would be the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. This yet again gives you some nice health and ability power, but it also slows, so whenever you hit the enemy champion, they will be slowed by 25%. Another pretty solid option on Annie would be the Spellbinder. This will give you some really nice ability power and extra burst damage, and also movement speed, which is great for roaming on Annie. It isn't a must-buy if you take Predator, but it is still a pretty solid option. If you're going to need to apply some Grievous Wounds, Morello Namacon is also a pretty damn good item. It will also give you 15 magic penetration and a bunch of ability power and health, so it is a fantastic item on Annie as well. Finally, if you are against very tanky teams, you could always get a Leandris. This does apply a burn based on the health of the enemy champion, so against those high health targets, it is a really, really strong item. For that example full build though, you take the core build and then get a Zonia's, Void Staff, and a Morello Nomicon. You'll have a really high amount of burst damage with this build, and you will also have the defensive from Azonias if you do get caught in a bad position, or you just need to wait for your spells to come off cooldown. And that's all I've got for Annie. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and visit my video description below. I have a link to all my social medias, and I do also have a Discord server, so that's one you should definitely check out. But other than that, thank you guys a ton for watching, I really do appreciate it, so take it easy, have a good day, and peace.